let's, let's take a simple form of smoothing, Angelonic Mercer smoothing. So for every document we have in the collection, we have an urn, right? That urn has some words. We're going to use that urn to get maximum likelihood estimates. So take the frequency of the word and divide it by the length of the document, right? And we're going to smoothe it with collection frequencies. Uh, how many times the word occurred in the whole collection divided by the collection size. Uh, that interpolation will give us a set of probabilities for every word. And then we're going to use those probabilities to estimate the likelihood of the query being drawn from that particular uh, document. So we're going to assume that when a query comes along, it's a random sample from that uh, mixture model with two components. Uh, and uh, we're, sam we're sampling IID. Uh, so the probability of observing a query is just the product of the query words of the probability for every word. And the probability for every word W is going to be just that uh, equation over there. So uh, that whole thing is the probability that you draw query Q from the model of document D, and then we would rank the documents by this quantity, the probability of Q uh, given D. <coughs> now, you look at this formula and you say, well, um, it's got some parts that we can recognize. So the first part is, uh, it's the term frequency multiplied by document length. So that looks like the normalized term frequency. Uh, and if you imagine taking the log of that product, then you would even have a log inside, which would sort of squash the things. Right? So this looks like a squashed term frequency. So that's good. We know that sort of works, because it worked in, um, in, in your basic T of idea for the sum. Uh, but this component looks wrong. What, what is wrong about this? It was the other way around for the IDF, right? Remember, in TF-IDF, you had the IDF. And the IDF said that the more frequent the word is, the lower the weight that you give it. And this is going to do the opposite. This is going to take... So uh, if some word like the occurs everywhere, all over the place, it's going to have a huge CF. And it looks like what you're doing is you're adding that component to the TF. So it shouldn't work. It should, it, 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 something's wrong. It shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't work well. Um, now, it turns out that it does, and it works really, really well. And the reason for that is um, we're going to take this product, we're going to manipulate it a little bit, and uh, turn it into a form that looks a lot more similar to the IDF. We're actually going to flip this uh, ratio. Um, and uh, the way that we're going to manipulate it is we're going to look at this, right? This product goes over all the terms in the query. Now, the terms in the query, there is two kinds of them. Some of the terms in the query also happen to occur in document D, and some don't. So, in fact, I've got, uh, I've, I've got three, uh, well, I've got two types of words in that product. Words that occur in the intersection of the query and the document, and then words occur that, that occur only in the query, but not in the document. Uh, words that only occur in the document don't even figure here. Right? You're not even concerned with them. So um, take this product, break it into two subproducts. The first one is going to go over the intersection. The second one is going to go over the set difference, the words that are in the query, but not in the document. For the words of the intersection, they are going to have a full probability estimate. Right. So that's the number of times that the word occurred in the documents divided by document length plus the smoothing. Words that didn't occur in the document, for them, TF is zero. Okay. So the first part is not there, and you only get a product of the second part. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to multiply and divide by the same quantity. You've seen this trick before. Uh, and it works, uh, and it works beautifully in this case again. So I'm going to multiply and divide by the product over the intersection of the query and the document of these terms that I have here. Uh, because it's the same quantity and all of the numbers are non-zero, I can do that. Uh, I can, I can always do that. Uh, now I look at that and I. Um, uh, First look at this component and uh, that component. If I put them together, I get a product 
of this quantity, just the smoothing component, that goes over all terms in the query. Right. So that's the part there. Right. Um, and you look at this formula, and something is absent from it. There is no letter. There's no letter D anywhere. What that means is that part is a constant that is independent of D. It's a constant that's independent of documents. And remember, we have this notion of rank equivalence. If we have some part of a ranking formula that doesn't affect, that, that doesn't depend on a particular document, uh, then it's not going to affect the ranking. So what I can do is I can take this part and drop it from the entire calculation. Or, if I wanted to be pure, I could pre-calculate it once and then multiply everything by that um, constant. So that part goes there. And this part, that is a product over the same terms that I had there. So I'm going to move it under the same product. Um, and what I get is the ratio where at the top I have a smoothed estimate the maximum likelihood plus, plus the smoothing component, and at the bottom I just have the smoothing component. Okay, um, And then a uh, little bit of algebra can turn it into something like that. So that part is the same as that part, right? so it's just 1 plus the ratio of this component to that component, and that's lambda over 1 minus lambda, tf over document length, divided now by cf over c. So that comes out as c over CF, uh, and that comes out in the form that says if the word is a rare word, you are actually going to give it more weight. Now, is this just an algebraic manipulation? Is, just a, is this just a trick that we did to make it look like that? No, not really, because um, if you remember, TFIDF is also going over the intersection. So what we've done is we've taken a language model formula and we've brought it to the same form as TFIDF. And it turns out that when it is in the same form, when it is a quasi-linear form, uh, the weights are coming out right. You're giving more weights to rare words and less weight to, uh, to the frequent words. <coughs> um, so this part, usually you just drop it. Uh, it turns out that this only works if lambda happens to be independent of, uh, of documents. And for something like Dirichlet smoothing, where you have a higher lambda for longer documents, that's no longer the case. Uh, you can still have a derivation that uh, is very similar to that, and the IDF still can outright. It's just that component, you cannot cancel it. It becomes, uh, it becomes uh, a weight that kind of depends on document length. So you still need to compute that. <coughs> 